All right, guys. Welcome back to more Splinter Cell Conviction. My name is Raven from the Sky. Thank you for your support. Vic, I'm inside White Box and I need a hand. This should be good. It is. I may need to set off an EMP inside the site in order to kill a trace. How tight is this place's exterior shielding? Tighter than a drill sergeant's asshole. Everything electronic inside would be fried. Outside, not a peep. So. Knock yourself out. <laughs> Thanks, Vic. Say that again. That was sloppy. I try to do a little bit better than that, but oh well. Oh, what's this? <laughs> what's this? Set him on fire. That's it. Go, go. Ooh. I got moved. Contact is still close by. Continue the search. Lucius Galliard? You know him? 
Not directly, but let me get back to you on this. Don't go after him until I do. In the meantime, we'll have an analyst working on Robertson's data. Reach your car. How did Sam get on site at the Lincoln Memorial? Easy. Secret Service acting on orders from the President got him there. Why'd they do that? Oh, that's a little trickier. You see, the name Lucius Galliard got Grimm's attention. She knew he was a businessman Reed was working with. But Reed kept things compartmentalized, and that was one of the aspects of his operation Grimm had no access to. It pissed her off. What Grimm did know was that Reed was meeting Galliard at the memorial in the morning, right after some bullshit photo op speech the VP was given. Galliard's people were handling event logistics, which was why he'd be there. Grimm took it to the president, who didn't like the coincidence. She wanted to know what they were talking about, and that meant getting Sam on site for audio surveillance. And more, if necessary. I'm inside. What now? The president's on the line, Sam. We need to eavesdrop on the conversation Reed's about to have with Galliard. So bug the memorial. What? We thought of that, Mr. Fisher. Galliard's people scrubbed the site in preparation for my vice president's charming little speech. And there was no time to get new equipment in place. Then what's plan B? You are. This morning's camera equipment is still in place. Get to the control booth, hack the camera controls to record the conversation, and uplink the feed to us. Oh, okay. just like that. All right, I'm on it. I'm in the camera booth. Now what? You need to sync the feed from the console to me so that I can see what we're getting. It should be easy to hack. Hang on. That's it. Now I need you to get comfortable with those camera controls. We're dealing with directional mics here, high-end, but they're integrated with the camera focus. Get Reed and Galliard in the shot, and we'll get the audio. Miss them, and we get nothing. And here they come. Now. Lucius, I'm glad you can make it. We've got some last-minute logistic issues to discuss. We're 24 hours out and you want to talk paperclip requisitions here, now. The site's clean, and I knew you'd be here since your company did the setup on the Samson speech. One of my companies, yes. I have several. <laughs> which includes Black Arrow, which I assume is what you want to talk about. We can talk about Black Arrow shortcomings later. I want to talk about what I need to make this go off smoothly. Do you now? I was impressed that he said that. What did you think of Samson's speech? It was a nice piece of grandstanding. He should give his writers a raise. He swears he writes all his speeches himself. I'm sure it plays well for the folks back home. I don't like the chances. You don't like Samson? I don't trust Samson. Which is... You should keep in mind. My, my, are you actually threatening me? I thought we were both more civilized than that. 
This is what your people want. The people I represent want you to deal with Fisher. Stop wasting time. Stop wasting their money. If Megiddo's getting cold feet... Let me make this clear, Reed. Megiddo planned this operation. Megiddo paid for this operation. And Megiddo would be very upset if anyone were allowed to interfere with it. He's not going to interfere because my men will deal with him. Since Black Arrow wasn't able to. I'll worry about Black Arrow. You stick to the plan. Like I was saying, it's interesting that you chose this place to meet. Cover. And cover's important, especially at a time. Which would explain why you're still here. Executive oversight. I hate leaving things to chance, or third party. You're supposed to be in Paris. All hell's about to break loose. My men will be very busy. So I cannot guarantee your safety. I'm not asking you to. Are you sure? This is to protect you and the operation. Some things require a personal touch. Now, if that's everything, we're done here. I'll see you when it's over. Goodbye, Lucius. Let's go after Reed. No, the smart play is to talk to Galliard. We can find Reed later. I concur. I want to know more about Megiddo, and Lucius Galliard is the only source we have. Okay, go. I'll freeze Galliard in place. We gotta make it to him first. Galliard. Mr. Galliard. My name is Anna Grimm's daughter. I'm calling on behalf of Tom Reed at 3rd Echelon. I know who you are. I just finished talking with your boss. What does Reed want now? Director Reed felt that the resolution that you two came to probably wasn't satisfactory for all sides. You really shouldn't talk to him like that. Guards! Where the hell are my guards? It's just you and me, Lucius. Let's talk. What's your connection with Reed? If you ask nicely, I tell you. If he's just hired help. God, you're thick. This is bigger than Reed, bigger than Third Echelon. They're just convenient. Why does Reed want you out of town? Your enhanced interrogation techniques need work. He wants to run the show when the EMPs are triggered. There's three of them scattered around the city. In a few hours, they go off, and he gets to play commando. There are people he wants to impress. The EMPs, where do I find them? Say please. I don't know. That's part of the plan. See? You can't stop it, Fisher. It's too big. It's too late. And the people I work for, this is just part of what they've got going on. Megiddo, who are they? Try harder, Fisher. Megiddo, who are they? They're the ones who run this town. In Moscow, in Beijing, in any other place that matters. <laughs> They're the ones who are going to get me out of this in one piece. And once Reed is finished at the white... Ah! That's all Reed now. Damn it. Officer in trouble! Sam, what's happening? Galliard's dead. The shooter's running. We need him alive. He may be our only link between Third Echelon and Megiddo. I've got a visual. He's on the stage. No problem. Come on. He just stepped into the VIP tent. Go, Sam. Yeah. We have to catch him. 
Same time we can't lose. I lost contact with the intruder. Waiting for you. Busting back up now. Go. He's waiting for you again, Sam. All here for you, He jumped down. Keep going, dead ahead. Whoa! I am not going out there. He's outside and on the move again, Sam. I just saw him run across the it make no sense. Officer in trouble! Police officer! Come out now! Any idea why? I'll tap into their Como to find out. They had orders too, that's why. Right. No sign of the hostile. The 
area ahead is not secure. I'm holding this end of the line, Stacer. Watch out for the second floor. There's another batch coming at you, Sam. Of course there is. Search and destroy. Find the hostile and take him out. Almost didn't make it. It shows you how much Sam changed that he would even think about going after Third Echelon. He'd been a company man, loyal to the bone. But now, here he was, ready to rip the guts out of the beast. The building's weakness was in the power supply. The main feed and primary backup ran through the basement parking garage. With a little C4 in the right places, Sam could cut the power to the building long enough to slip inside the echelon. That was good enough for Sam. He was going in, and he wanted them to know he was coming. Sam, are you in the garage? Smell like a spare tire. It was the best way. Now I need you to use the C4 you packed to take out the building's primary and secondary transformers. Do it simultaneously when you reach the front desk, and you'll have a short window before the emergency power puts security back online. They're both on the parking level, right? Right, but in two separate rooms. And don't be seen or they're gonna seal the security doors and you're done. And don't give those surveillance cameras a show. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop it here. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Splinter Cell Conviction. If you like the episode, drop a like, subscribe, and hit notifications to help the channel and the series grow. And you're no you'll be notified each and every time I upload. Take care. Catch you guys in the next one.